Hello and Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you had a wonderful time celebrating. In today's video, I'll show you my GoPro Hero 11 settings for the best image quality possible, as well as my color grading workflow. Starting with the settings, I always shoot in 5.3K 25 or 50p during the day and 4K 25 up to 100p in low light scenarios. However, because I rarely shoot in low light with the GoPro, I shoot in 5.3K 95% of the time. This provides me with the highest possible resolution and image quality. I always leave the field of view at linear unless I'm shooting action sports, in which case I'll change it to super view or even hyper view. I leave hyper smooth on auto boost 95% of the time. In my opinion, it provides the best balance between image crop and grade stabilization. Because I enjoy color grading my footage, I always have 10 bit enabled and the bit rate set to high for the best image quality possible. I set the shutter to automatic and the EV compensation to minus 0.5 because the GoPro tends to overexpose the image. Depending on how cloudy it is, I set the white balance to somewhere between 5000 and 6000 Kelvin. I set the ISO minimum to 100 and the ISO maximum to 400. However, I manually lock the exposure with the spot meter the majority of the time. I don't let the GoPro expose for me because as previously stated, it tends to overexpose the image, making it look amateurish. However, if I'm doing action sports and the scene changes frequently, I let the GoPro handle everything. Finally, I set the sharpness to low and the color to flat. I like to add sharpness myself in post-production and flat color is the best one to use for color grading. Let me now get on the computer and show you my color grading workflow. So I have here three clips on the timeline from the GoPro Hero 11, straight out of camera, not edited, and we're going to edit these clips from start to finish. Let's start with the first clip and I'm going to add some contrast with color curves, slightly push down the shadows, and I'm always looking at the waveform. I don't want to crush the shadows or blow out the highlights. Just creating a nice S curve, adding some contrast to the image, reducing the highlights in here to create a nicer highlight roll off and playing around with the points until it looks great. And I think I am pretty much done. This is before and after quite big of a difference. Next thing I'm going to do is correct the white balance. I can see a lot of green in this clip. So I'm going to add color wheels and I'm going to push the tint towards magenta red. I'm going to overdo it and then bring it down to somewhere around eight, nine. And also I'm going to bring up the yellows in this shot because I think it's a bit too blue. This is too much, for example, but I'm going to go somewhere between 5,300 and 5,500. I think 5,350 looks great. This is before and after. Quite big of a difference. Next, I'm going to add some sharpness because like I said, I always shoot in low sharpness and then add sharpness in post-production. So I'm gonna use the sharpen tool and by default, it's adding 2.5 sharpness and I'm going to reduce it to somewhere between 1.2 to 1.5. Let's do 1.3 and now I think it looks great. So this is how the clip looks like straight out of camera, pretty dull and boring. Then this is how it looks like with a bit of contrast added, then with the white balance corrected, and finally with a bit of sharpness added. This is basically basic color correction. I do it to all of my clips and it's not something you can automate because you always gonna have clips with different exposure. So this clip is a bit dark but some clips will be a bit bright so you have to do this step manually all the time. Now let's stylize and color grade this clip. I'm going to start with hue saturation curves and I'm going to look for the dominating colors in the shot and basically push them around until I get a stylish look that I like. So in this example the dominating colors are orange, yellow, a bit of green in here and maybe a bit of blue but the majority is orange, yellow, red. So I'm going to add points to these colors and I'm going to push them around just like so. Quick tip, if you're using Final Cut Pro, you can hold the Option button and you can gradually move the point rather than it going really quick and fast. So I think I'm going to push the oranges, I mean the yellows towards red, orange, just like so. This is before. 
a bit yellow and green and now it's a bit red and warmer and with the greens i'm also going to add another point and i think i'm going to push them towards the yellow as you can see now it's a bit purple and red but i, I am going to just push them a bit towards yellow this is before and after that's the first step then i think i'm going to desaturate these colors i think it's a bit too saturated just slightly a little bit again i'm going to hold the option button and slightly bring it down this is how it looks like when you completely move it down black and white basically but i am going to slightly bring it down right here and then i'm also going to decrease the luminance to make these colors pop a bit more again nothing crazy just a little bit to add even more contrast to this image now i am going to remove the saturation in the shadows i do it to all of my clips doesn't matter what camera i'm using the gopro my drone my big camera i do it all of the time so as you can see if i'm going to exaggerate the saturation in the shadows there's a lot of red and it looks unnatural and i want my shadows to be as black as possible and my highlights to be as white as possible but in this shot the shadows are dominating so i'm going to focus just on the shadows so i'm going to bring it somewhere here so before it was here too much red in the shadows and now i'm going to bring it here and also i'm going to add another point in here and create a curve to make it a bit more gradual just like so so now as you can see the shadows look a bit more black than before and i think i'm pretty much done with the hue saturation curves if i do it alone it takes me literally like one or two minutes to do all of this next thing i'm going to stylize the shot even further with color wheels i'm going to add some teal in the shadows basically i'm going to go for a teal and orange look and i'm going to push the mid-tones and highlights towards orange so let's add some teal in the shadows I'm going to move the slider by holding the option key to make the movement a bit more gradual and i think this is enough pay a close attention to this part of the image as you can see there's a lot of teal now whereas before it was a bit more red it's a slight difference but there is definitely a difference then then with the mid-tones i'm going to go crazy and just see what color looks the best and i think somewhere here looks the best it's like warm red orange thing it emphasizes the sunset in the shot yeah and i think somewhere here looks great and with the highlights i'm gonna push them towards yellow that is obviously a bit too much for me but it can definitely work actually but i think i'm going to reduce the highlights a bit to somewhere around here this is before and after quite big of a difference now this shot looks like it was shot in sunset time and it looks much better than before so this is how we started with this shot as you can see it looks pretty boring then i added some contrast with color curves then i fixed the white balance then i added some sharpness then i manipulated the colors with hue saturation curves and finally i pushed the mid-tones and highlights towards orange and the shadows towards teal to emphasize the teal and orange look that i was going for so this is the next shot and i'm basically gonna do the same thing but a bit faster now so first thing i'm gonna add some contrast then i'm going to correct the white balance GoPro always usually leans more towards green, so I always have to add a bit more magenta to the shots. And also I'm going to add some yellow, maybe like 5,800 looks great. Now I'm going to add some sharpness, about 1.3. This is before, with contrast, white balance corrected, and sharpness. Now I'm going to stylize this shot. I'm going to start with hue saturation curves and this time I'm going to manipulate the dominating colors which are blue, teal and a bit of green maybe. So let's focus on these colors and I think I'm going to go more towards teal, not too much. Something like this. This is before, a bit too blue. 
and this is after a bit more teal into the shot and also maybe i'm going to see yeah i can play around with the oranges on the outside and i'm going to reduce their saturation just a bit and i'm gonna reduce also the saturation of the blues and teals just a bit and i'm going to reduce the exposure of all these colors just a tiny bit and again i'm going to reduce the saturation in the shadows look how much of a difference it makes now everything is a bit too blue too saturated and now it looks a bit more natural somewhere around here and i'm going to add another point just to make it a bit more gradual and let's see if the highlights do something here Eh, not too much maybe reduce them slightly and I think I'm quite happy with the results here now I'm going to push the mid-tones and highlights towards warmer colors but this time I'm going to leave the shadows alone because everything here is still already and I think the shadows look fantastic already so let's push the mid-tones towards red orange to make it a bit warmer and also the highlights towards orange red maybe a bit more red looks better in this example so again we started here then i added some contrast with color curves then i corrected the white balance with color wheels then i added some sharpness then i changed the colors with hue saturation curves and also reduce the saturation in the shadows and finally i push the mid-tones and highlights towards orange red with color wheels now this is the final shot and it looks a bit different than the previous two because I shot this on a bit of a cloudy day and everything here looks a bit more cold and moody compared to the other two so let's start with color curves i'm going to increase the contrast slightly this is before and this is after next i'm going to correct the white balance again there's too much green in this shot and also i'm going to add more blue this is before and after now I'm going to add some sharpness, about 1.3. And then now I'm going to stylize this shot. I'm gonna start with the hue saturation curves. I'm gonna play around with the teals, greens, maybe also oranges and blues. So let's start with the greens, teals and blues. Now I don't like the color of the sand here, so I'm going to warm it up a little bit just to make it a bit more warm i think this is enough and this is before and after and i think i'm going to decrease the saturation in this example quite heavily and i'm going to drastically decrease the luminance of the blues and teals and decrease the saturation in the shadows now I'm going to add color wheels and this time I'm going to push everything more or less towards blue and teal. I think a moody look will work perfectly on this shot. So I'm going to start by pushing the shadows towards blue teal. Not too much, just a little bit. And the mid-tones also towards blue. And the highlights I'm going to push towards yellow. So again, this is how the clip looks like straight out of camera. This is with sharpness added, then with white balance corrected, then with sharpness, then with hue saturation curves, and finally with color wheels pushing the mid-tones, shadows and highlights towards different colors. And boom, I think it's done.
Now, sometimes when I don't have time to color grade my GoPro footage, I use my own LUTs for the GoPro Hero 10 and Hero 11. So let me show them to you. The LUTs called Roma LUTs and inside there is a Moon LUT and also a Mars LUT. The Mars LUT pushes everything towards warmer colors and the Moon LUT pushes everything towards colder cooler colors. So in this example, I'm going to use the Mars LUT. And as you can see, it makes everything look red, like Mars basically, very warm and nice, but it doesn't look real, it's too much, so I'm going to decrease the intensity to somewhere between 0.4 and 0.5. Let's start with 0.5. A bit too much still, 0.4, looks fantastic. Then the next example is gonna work well in this shot, the Moonlight, and as you can see, it makes everything very moody, blue, and cold. But again, this is a bit too much. I'm going to reduce it to something like 0.6, a bit less. Now I think it looks great. This is before the LUT, after the LUT. A minor difference, but it definitely adds a bit more style to the shot. And this is with the moon LUT, before and after. I'm going to leave links to the LUTs down below, but please, before applying these LUTs to your GoPro footage, do a basic color correction of adding contrast, fixing the white balance, and also adding sharpness if you're shooting with low sharpness and with your GoPro like I do, because these LUTs are creative LUTs. They're not designed to add contrast, fix your white balance, or add sharpness. You'll have to do these things by yourself because I can't really know how you're going to expose your shot or what white balance you're going to use or what sharpness setting you're going to use with your GoPro. So please do a basic color correction before applying my lights to your GoPro footage. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. I hope you'll have a great 2023 and hope also to see you on my next video. Peace.